Hey everybody, it's Robert and you're watching Sidestep Adventures and I'm out here with Mr. Dan today and we are back in the Waverly Hall Cemetery and we're going to go back up to the bird plot where I used the D2 on the graves a week ago and do an update on it, see how much better they look. So let's take a look. Yeah, so if you with this big square, came up had a finial point on top and somebody stole both of them. They had a raw off. A rod that ran down through here with I guess a nut on the bottom but somebody took both of those and the gate also disappeared all right well here it is a week later the monument there has cleaned up but I could swear it looks like it's moved further and further every time I see it. It does look that way, but of course you know it hasn't. I guess it's just because it's been cleaned. It, it shows up better. Yeah. It shouldn't be too difficult to put that back where it goes. Hmm, that looks much better. That stuff really does a good job. Yeah, I am really impressed with this one of course it's the one that i worked on the most but look over here i mean that is oh yeah no you could never read that before uh -uh. it's always bothered me that they did a d there instead of a b right oh <laughs> uh. hmm. yeah that was always difficult to read long ago somebody tried to patch that little urn that was up there with some concrete I noticed that it looks like this is someone attempted to reset it before or something yeah. at the bottom there, but now it's leaning that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, they ordered this from Macon, our taupe, our top, making this headstone. Yeah. It came a long way. Yeah, it did. And then little Willie's grave cleaned up really nice too. Just there you go. It's kind of gummy feeling as it moves. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. This piece here feels almost like it's got, like maybe someone. You feel that? Or I see that? it, yeah. It's like, it's like it has silicone underneath it. Somewhere in recent years. You know, about uh, 15, 20 years ago, the cemetery had a lot of work done out here. Standing up monuments. and That may be something that that monument company put in there to seal it back. Right. Uh, and that, this, the heat on it is kind of causing it to dissolve. Yeah, I guess it hasn't moved anymore. It just, it sure does. I have to look back at the pictures. I guess we'd see white under there if it had. Because it should slide. If it was just stacked one on top of the other, it would slide a little easier. And that's not going Let's anywhere. See. Let's see if I can set this down. Let me try. Taking them down. There we go. Okay. There we go. It's a little better. Yeah, it is. This one isn't moving at all. Mm. That's why I wonder if it's got some kind of glue under it. Yeah. I'm have to watch that now and see if it moves back where it was. Right. better this one this is a good example of before and after on this one where I brushed it right there and just left yeah. it to just work on it by itself and there yeah. and then didn't touch that one at all this one turned out really good and hopefully it'll continue it probably needs to be applied on here again but I could never read this one and I see little details over uh -huh. that now I never see that before And that, what was it called? D, uh, D2? Yeah. 
I understand that if you spray it on, you come out and spray a little each week that it continues to work and bleach. Yeah. And uh, eventually this will, I've, so I'm told uh, by someone who uses it on a regular basis that it will bleach out white as cotton. And, but it's really, really done a good job on what, I mean compared to the way it was. Yeah, this one was really hard to read. I couldn't read that epitaph or any of the detail on there. And then I did a little bit of work on Archie's grave there and it looks better. You can see where this one's starting to yeah. work on there, all in there. So this is Archie's son, George Henry Bird, and their father's name was George, I believe, George Bird. You don't know who that is, do you? No, I don't. If I had to guess, I would say that it's probably one of Mr. George's children, or Mr. Mr. Archie's children. Yeah. Uh, he was known as Mr. Archbird, and uh, he had a lot of children. I mean, you can go onto the census record and look, but a few of them are buried here. Uh, yeah, there's a... Jeannie is buried. She was Jeannie Baldwin. Have you, you gone to her grave? I have not. This is uh, Jeannie Elizabeth Bird, wife of Robert Lee Baldwin, Sr. All right, she's the daughter of Mr. George Archie Bird. And uh, Jeannie and her husband, Robert, had a number of children as well. And that's what most of these graves are, is all of their uh, family. Yeah. They had Robert Baldwin, Jr. He was a mule trader. His daddy, of course, was the one that had the store and was in business with Mr. Jim, uh, James Henry Bird, Mr. Jim Henry Bird. They were in business together for a long, long time. Uh, and then, let's see, that's George Henry Bird. Or George Henry Baldwin. George Henry Baldwin, I'm sorry. I've heard folks talk about him. I never didn't know much about him, but I've heard people speak of him. And he was a veteran, too. I just saw this stone. It's kind of some weeds up from there. It's almost covered up with grass clippings and oh well, there we go. He's in World War II. Is it see T Sergeant Eleventh Bomb? GP, Army, Air Force, World War II. But then they had a daughter named Annie Bird Baldwin. She never married and did not have children. And then they had a daughter named Mary Baldwin. She married John Alexander Barron. And I believe they had children. I'm not certain, but I believe they did. And then, uh, Miss Margaret Baldwin, she was Miss Ma Miss Margaret Neal. She married Mr. Ben Neal. I remember her, and somewhere I've got a picture of her sitting in the drugstore. Oh, really? Uh -huh. uh, the later drugstore when Dr. Stinson operated it. Yeah. Uh, there's a picture of her sitting in there at a table. She and Mr. Ben Neal are both sitting in there. Uh, and there was another daughter. Her name was Miss Archie Baldwin. They must not have buried her here. I don't see her grave. And you, when we found out that Jenny uh, Bird Baldwin is the one who accidentally shot little Willie, he said you were surprised to hear that. Um, I was. And you had known someone that was related to her. Who, yes, who was that? I, I knew a lot of members of this family. Oh, well, they're neighbors as well. And I never heard that story. I never heard uh, 
one of the closest neighbors was Miss Margaret Pitts. And Miss Margaret lived to be 104 years old. And she, she told a lot of stories. And I definitely would have remembered if she ever told that one. She yeah. never did. That's, and I'm sure she knew about it. I'm sure that was something that, that shocked the whole community when it happened and they just chose not to discuss it later. Right. Miss Jeannie Baldwin was a very uh, prominent citizen here and she lived all her life or the rest of her life right across the road from the Pitts residence. The Baldwin house burned uh, years later but that's where she lived. And uh, let's see, she's got a sister buried right over there, uh, Miss Carrie Luttrell. Carrie Luttrell, that's the house that was in front of where we went to the old sharecropper house, right? That's right. This is one of Mr. George Archie Bird's daughters, Carrie Bird Luttrell. She married Mr. Joe Luttrell. And I don't remember either one of them. I vaguely remember him. He and his son, little Joe, died in an automobile accident in Columbus on Cherokee Avenue, I believe. Um, you know where the traffic light is at Cherokee Avenue and where you turn to go up to St. Paul Methodist Church. Yeah. There at Lake Bottom Park. I believe that accident happened there. I'm not certain, but I think that's where it happened. Um, I remember hearing about that. And they both died as a result of that. And little Joe was his only son, only child, besides that child over there that died as an infant. But little Joe died in that accident, and little Joe had no children either. So little Joe's wife inherited the, uh, the old Luttrell home. And you may remember it sat there for many, many years vacant, uh, and it just kind of finally fell into terrible disrepair. Yeah. And the little rock building up there in the middle of town was uh, built by Mr. Joe. That was his little gas station. And prior to that, he had a store there uh, back in the, the old days, early 1900s. Uh, Mr. Joe was also the state representative for Harris County. Oh, really? Back in his day. Early, let's say 19, early 1900s. Where is Little Joe buried? Little Joe was buried in Park Hill Cemetery in Columbus. He and gotcha. his wife, her name was Minnie. Miss Minnie Luttrell. Mr. Jim Henry Bird's second wife is buried right down there on the other side of that tree. Oh yeah, I guess you've been to her grave. I have not. This is the Pitts family plot. Look at this. Solid Georgia marble. And I'm told now you notice that this has been here a long time and it has not moved one inch. You see how straight that wall is? Yeah. I'm told that this marble goes three times in the ground as much as it sticks oh, up wow. above the ground. Mr. Pitts made his money from, they started out in the mercantile business and then he invested in the uh, early days of Coca-Cola. He and Mr. W.C. Bradley of Columbus, Georgia, were best friends. And Mr. Bradley had him to invest some money in Coca-Cola, and the rest is history, right. as they say. This is Mr. J. 
James Henry, they call him Jim Henry Bird. This was his second wife. So this lady lived in your house. Uh, and she and Mr. Bird had no children. Miss Ella Bird, she was Ella Wallace, and her brother lived there with her for a time. Uh, yeah, this is Mr. Henry Wallace. This is Ms. Ella Bird's brother. And he lived there in the house uh, with her as well. And his wife, strangely enough, her first name was Bird. Oh, really? Yeah. She was not related to the Birds, but her first name was Bird. And uh, her father, Mr. Duncan Phillips, is buried in the old cemetery over uh, Ridgeway, Prospect Methodist Church. Okay, yeah. One of the ones with a fence around it. They're buried in there with the, the, the Phillipses are on one side and the Hudson's on the other, right next to what used to be the, the driveway that went into the cemetery. And on some of the flashing that came off of my house, it said ordered for H.H. H. Wallace. Yes. Uh -huh. well, he, he lived there and looked after the house, of course, for his sister. And uh, then Mr. Wallace, his daughter, he and Ms. Ms. Wallace's daughter, Ms. Mary Wallace Newberry, and her husband moved there. And they're the ones that lived there and, uh, and sold the house to, I believe, the Lytle family. And then it came on down. The Lytle sold it to, to your family, I believe. That's right. And uh, as long as I can remember, your family has been there. But uh, Mr. and Ms. Newberry had two daughters, and uh, one of them still lives locally. And the rest of these folks in here are members of the Story family. And I think one of Mr. Wallace's, let's see, someone in the Wallace family married into the Story family, and that's how they're they're all connected somehow. Gotcha. Ms. Newberry's daughter could tell you more about that than I can. But the stories were a large family. That entire plot down there by the highway was all the story family. And there's also some stories buried under the magnolia tree over here. But anyway, that's the succession of ownership of the old bird farm was the birds, then the Wallaces, then the Newberries, and then your family. Right. With the Lytles. Lytles in there too. Yeah, the Lytles. Briefly. The Lytles went there very briefly. Very what briefly. I heard about the Lytles is that Mr. Lytle had a rare illness in yeah. there. And he, he moved in and got really sick and then had to move. Yeah. And it was some very, very rare illness. Yeah. And it, but he used it for uh, horse farming. And the daughter of Mary Wallace Newberry told me that they her parents who lived in my house moved up the street and built a new house because they were yeah. tired of all of the crops they would sell the crops and in in the winter time use all the money from the summer crops to fix up the house so they wanted a new house and they wound up selling it mr newberry i have great memories of mr newberry he had a store in waverly hall and, that's right and uh, i think generations of kids grew up going to his store he had the biggest candy counter and it was it was right at the, the right height that you could see over in all the boxes. It was flat, and uh, I remember all the two for a penny and three for a penny candies and, and candy bars, you know, 10 and 15 cent candy bars. And uh, he had a Coca-Cola drink box behind the front door when you went in, and it was, it was just really something that good memories are made of. And Mr. Newberry used to always say that, uh, I remember him telling my daddy one time that he had been criticized once for selling the farm. And he had another farm, which is now the Vardaman place up here, well, Victoria Air Park. And he said he was criticized for selling that. And he said that he, he uh, used the money to buy the store. And he said that he made a living out of the store, a good living. Right. And, you know, crops were unpredictable and cows get sick. And it's one thing after another with a farm. Especially then, in those days, but, uh, but Mr. Newberry's store was a landmark and still is.